Classic Truck Rescue. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for coming back. Anyways, the sound is probably really horrible right now. I've got two cameras set up. Camera one and camera two. Because I'm pretty sure we're going to have a noise problem. The flag is flapping really loud. And I'll get you a shot of that. It's been windy, rainy, and cold today. But I'm tired of waiting. I got to get a roof over my head, so I'm going to slap some new boards up, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking. I'm going to try to speed this up by pre-measuring and marking the posts where the girts go. Try to get as many of these new boards on this thing as I can. Get it all uh, braced up so it's solid, square, plumb, and uh, start throwing some metal on this thing. So. We can go indoors. Wouldn't that be nice? Anyway, I don't know how much of this is going to work because it, it has been pretty windy and the flag is a going. But I got to be honest with you. I think I got a little bit of that seasonal dysfunctional disorder or whatever they call it. Where I love Oregon. I mean, it's the wet weather. It's the wet weather that brings you beautiful greens and just 100 million different shades of green during the spring and summer and it's so beautiful out here in the spring and summer and I am looking forward to it because this is my year to build things and do things and spring forward I'm waiting for spring to spring forward anyway uh, I'll get you a shot of the flag and then I'll put the GoPro on my head but I don't know if I'm going to run the GoPro on my head when I actually get the pounding nails. And uh, we'll it is what it is, folks. I, I've been putting a lot of videos of previous things before, but we got to keep going on the building. See, I beat y'all to it. We got to keep going on the building. We got to get the building up. We got to get a roof over our heads. Life will be better when I get the building up. I just cost myself about 100 comments comment about the building and how much we need to get it up we got some overalls and a nice jacket jamie got me some socks that have fur in them <laughs> maybe i shouldn't have told you that but uh if it starts raining i got a raincoat inside the little blazer over there i'll go put it over this and uh i gotta get over this seasonal dysfunctional disorder that I got going and get a roof over my head, then it won't matter because I can stay inside and turn my wrenches and you know all that stuff. I'm working in that that I just showed you. It ain't happening. I don't mind if it's cold or wet or rainy, but when it's all three of them, mm -mm. I'm not going to sit out here and work on this thing and get soaked. Uh, I brought you boiling and building when I built while it was 101 degrees out. I brought you building in a blizzard. It wasn't really a blizzard, but it was uh snowing and groppling i didn't let the grapple stop me i didn't allow the rain to cause me too much pain i brought you videos of me working in the rain too but when it's the wind's blowing the rain sideways and it's freezing and i get soaked through i'm going in call of the wild today's the next day it's a new day it's cold it's very cold but it's not raining and it's not windy we could have some of that later but I'm just gonna get going I'm gonna break out my make it happen or tool and just get some done maybe I'll strap you on the head or whatever but we're gonna get something done today and yesterday turned out to be a blessing because I stand there's one little corner of my building that has some uh, particle board OSB whatever over the top of it and I went and stood there. I thought, well, I'll just wait out the, the torrential downpour. 
under there and then it started blowing sideways and when that happened I reached out there's some people that think I'm a little nuts because I talk to myself when I have a camera on my head well that's I'm talking to my viewers but if you saw me yesterday when the, that rain started coming down and there wasn't any cameras on I was pleading with the Lord please let me get some work done on my building and uh, it didn't happen and sometimes that happens for a reason so I took the long way home I was riding Yunkin over there and on my way in I took a little snapshot of the the current crop of trucks and I put it on the place and this morning I was bombarded by people wanting to buy trucks and most of the replies I got were from someone's special cousin that they keep in the basement. I'm, I'm not trying to be mean, but you know what I'm talking about. Uh, that is bored and wants to play with me. But one guy he really stepped up to the plate. And I was like, oh, he's, he's not serious, but he was. The proof is in the pudding. Anyways, so it worked out to be a blessing. I have money to go buy more wood and get a whole bunch more work done. And I'm that far from putting metal on this building. And, and, and having a shop. So, without further ado, let's throw all this on this. Let's get to work. What I should film is the time I spend standing around here scratching my head. Hi, bird. Who's bird? Uh, I had to take some measurements before I got started just slapping all this wood on here, and I'll show you what I did. It took a little while, and I found out a pleasant little surprise in the end. They confirmed I had everything measured right, but I'll show you what I did. So I'm getting ready to make that side look like this side. And this is the side that Lou and Jim, rest in peace brother, and a few guys put up. And uh, Evan, rest in peace too. Wow. Anyway. The goal is to get all my girts in on this side, on that side. So what I did is I came down here. I've got these blocks right there that are at the base of all the posts. And those are the blocks that we used to measure how far up the truss heels, those guys right there, should go. And so I came down here. I put a 2x6, 12-footer. Um, in between these blocks and then I did the same thing all the way around that's actually the top of the floor right there and I don't want to put these PT boards on the base right now because some of the blocks are actually underground I've still got to level this floor out yes this is a floor <laughs> anyway I still got to level all this out and the thing is see that block right there and we set all these blocks with a tool that I had the opportunity of buying called a transit level. So those are about 300 bucks, but I had a guy that was knowledgeable about them come out and he actually showed Lou and I how to use it. There's an episode on that. I'll go back and make sure that's in the description. But anyways, so I've got to dig down a little bit actually before I can put the bottom boards on there. And uh, over there on that side, you'll see that the blocks are way off the ground. That's just, all this has to be leveled up, and gravel brought in, compacted and all that. But for right now, I'm trying to get the girts in on the gable end and there, over there. So I went down here and uh, I marked off and, and I screwed myself up here. I should have measured from the top of this board to the bottom of this board and then made a line and measured this distance but I got there in the long way anyway I measured from the top of these boards that I laid all the way around and I did put a level on them to make sure that they were level and uh, so this is the height everything needs to be at so with these boards on there I measured and it was 11.5 from the top of this board to the top of an existing girt uh, I should have measured to the bottom which I went ahead and did and uh, that gave me the height that the first girt goes on the outside of the post at 
Then I measured from the top of the first skirt to the bottom of the second and came up with 18.5 and I went ahead and remeasured that just to make sure. It's 18.5 so I figured well I need about four 18 and a half inch boards to put spacers so I can rapidly put them up down there. So I was going to make that and then I realized the thing about I should have measured from the bottom of that girt to the top of that board and I corrected myself and oh I corrected myself on the ones that I'm going to be working on today so I, I marked both sides of the boards yep and this is where the bottom of the first skirt goes so I went ahead I'll show you on this middle section oh on the section we're actually going to be working on Anyway, I cut myself some blocks. So this is where my first skirt needs to go. I put these blocks in. They're temporary. They just have two screws holding them on. And I put them on each of the posts where the first skirt needs to go. So when I get going, I will set the first skirt on there. And then uh, attach it, nail it off. And then put in spacers, 18 and a half inch spacers to show me where the next one goes. Now I was cutting some boards to make those spacers. And I came across one that said 18 and a half on it. And I flipped it over. And Lou had written on it 18 and a half girt spacer, one of four. And uh, so all that did was that confirmed that I had the right measurement. These don't become part of the building. They're a tool for stacking up the girts. Anyway, so I've got all my blocks made and I'm doing some work on the bucket truck. Uh, it, there was a loose wire on the back of the alternator. I got that tightened up and I went and bought some cables. I got tons of comments saying, Rick, you should have two batteries in there. And you know what? I knew it. Now, I don't I hate to say I, I'm a know-it-all, but I kind of knew it because of how deep that battery compartment is. And uh, But I only had the money to buy two of them when I, when I got them. And they were starting, I had one for each truck, these identical trucks, pretty much identical as far as the truck itself. Uh, so I had one in each truck, and they started fine. They would start fine with one battery, but the batteries are older and it's winter. And I came to another realization. I don't think I've ever worked on this building in the winter. Uh, I've, I, I've, been, I've been letting my seasonal dysfunctional order run the show and I've made some changes on that. As you can see, as long as it's not raining, windy, and I'm drenched and freezing I'll be out here working on this it's a priority but uh, so I got the two batteries charged I put a charge on both of them and I hope I don't have to buy new ones but I went and bought some cables to connect the positive to positive and the negative to negative so that those are hooked up parallel and will give me more cranking amps and thank you for all of the people I really don't know a lot about electrical but I kind of knew that I just didn't want to face the reality of because now basically I have to go buy two more batteries for the other truck because because I'm going to be working this winter but anyways I'll get these cables on there and we'll see how she does I'll be right back I got that all hooked up real nice uh, I did thank you for all of the comments because when 400 of you <laughs> tell me to put two batteries in and hook them up parallel so I can have more cranking amps mm, I'm thinking you're right anyway so it's not hooked up to the charger or anything but I've got both of the batteries hooked up uh, I could not find a block warmer anywhere on it and I looked but let's see how it does oh wait I do have still have this issue to deal with this fuel shut off or whatever it is it has to be held open it has to be held open and 
I got a little device there for holding it open. And you do have to pull that off. Uh, hey, how about some comments on that? Because I did ask about that before. What's it called? Right there. This little dude that I'm using that uh, zip tie to pull down because it doesn't run if you don't do that. And when you undo that, it stops running. But as long as it'll start good. Yeah, another question, glow plugs. I don't see any light up there indicating that glow plugs are being warmed up. Oh, I forgot. Take two a little further from the buzzer. I don't see any lights on the dash that say anything about glow plugs. So if you're knowledgeable, International S1900. Let's see if she's gonna run. Oh, turning over real nice. Oh, oh, that's very nice. Oh, I like that. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, all of my viewers. That was, that was a lot better than it has been, wasn't it? I mean, that almost sounded like it was supposed to sound that way. Anyway. Oh, it's building up air pressure, so it's still going to buzz at us. I wanted to give the year of this. It is a... It's a 1987, and the model number on the tag says 1954, but on the truck it says S1900. 1954 on the tag. If you know anything about the glow plugs or the block heater, I mean, I've looked. Uh, or that new hickey in there. Anything you can share with me is greatly appreciated. My viewers have helped me a lot with comments and information. I'll tell you what, that's nice. She still smokes up a storm. America. America. Uh, she still smokes up a storm. I'm not going to do that Greta thing. Uh, but it runs good. And that'll work. Thank you, Lord. Appreciate that. That'll make my life a lot easier out here. Let's get some work done. Uh, so anyway, away from the noise, one thing I do do want to bring up. There is one thing that I would like to ask your help with, please. When I found this board, I had already spent all the time to come up with the measurement I needed and everything. But the reason that I started down at that other end in the section that we had built with Lou was because I wanted to make sure this end gets done right too. So I wanted to go off his measurements. And I got the correct measurement after a lot of, you know, not a lot, but you saw what I did. And when I found this, when, it, when I saw 18 and a half on the back of it, I was looking for a piece of scrap wood and it said 18 and a half Gert spacer it confirmed it let me know this is this is what I need to use to space my girts and I'll be doing it right so Lou hasn't been doing good a lot of people ask about Lou he's not doing good and he's not really in a position where I can go film him but I would like to ask you if you would to please uh, before when we were building the building a lot of my viewers sent Lou some cards from all over the world. He got about a dozen of them and he loved it. My mom said he just cherished them and it still does. If I could get people to please, Lou can't get out of my mom's basement at the time. She's taking care of him full time. Uh, if you guys could send him just a quick note. Uh, Lou used to be a trucker. He was a trucker for a very long time. I know a lot of my viewers are truckers. If you can, shoot him a note. And uh, He got the million miles or whatever. He was a good trucker. Lou was a trucker's trucker. But uh, if you could send him a note, a card, anything, it would really brighten his day. And he's having a hard time hearing, too. So uh, he, he doesn't have a lot of company. So if you send a card or a letter, it would really mean a lot to him. And it would mean a lot to me. I'd be so grateful. Uh, so you would send it to Lou K, L O U K period, at P.O. Box 1023, Malala, Oregon, 
97038. Malala is spelled M-O-L-A-L-L-A. -L -L -A. And I'm a Maluligan. Anyways, if you would send Lou a card, let her just a note. Hi, Lou. Hope you have a good day. Anything. He loves to read. And he loves to hear from you guys. And I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing if it weren't for what that man taught me how to do. And little clues he's leaving me all over the place. I'm going to take all these boards. When I get done with the building, I'm going to put them all in one area on the wall. Put a little plexiglass over them. Some pictures of Lou and I working on the building. And, 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 I, and the bucket trucks just purring away. Thank you, Terry. Those, were, those trucks were loaned to me by a guy a long time ago. And... I complain about them sometimes and everything, but there's no way I could have done anything without those trucks. So I'm very grateful for them. Thank you, Perry. I almost forgot to tell you, I did my favorite thing, which is getting up on a ladder and measured that rafter tail, how far the fascia board is from the post up there. I didn't put my rafter tails up over there because I wanted to make sure they were the same distance as those over there. And uh, so I did that and it's 11 inches that way when I get to the top of these right here I can go ahead and put the rafter boards and the fascia board on mm -hmm. doing big things Thanks again, Lou. I don't need these boards laying on these blocks anymore. I did get some nice boards. I went through all of them. Make sure I got the best. Nice straighties. And don't worry about this end. I'll cut that off after. I'll cut them all off flush. I think I had determined that I can get the bottom three from the ground.
I got enough nails. I got enough nails before I have to go move the truck. Last one. I'll leave that block right there. Yeah, I'll put that one on first. No, I won't. No, I won't. No, I will not. That won't work. to go right there. Okay, movie the truck time. Better grab myself some more nails. Oh, probably better unhook myself. That's working out pretty good. nailed off now yes it is now 
hope I don't have to back the truck up. I might though. Maybe not. I know I can reach out there to nail that. And once we get up higher, I'll be closer. I don't need to screw that one in. I don't. It's unnecessary. Not necessary. Oh no, oh no, you guys hang in there, hang in, I'm coming, Woo. I got you, I got you. <laughs> Ooh. Make sure we're still running right here. 